So whenever you're talking about hiring within an organization, we want to you know make sure that we we are getting those personalities that complement us because if we only have one specific personality in an organization, the organization isn't going to last very long because you have typically one strength with a lot of the same weaknesses. So you want to begin to hire in some of those uh, personalities that can pick up and carry on where your weakness uh, may come into play. So. Hey, hey, everybody, if you are an online entrepreneur who wants to take your leadership to the next level and you want to learn how to engage with clients better, engage with your employees better, today we have a show just for you. I brought in one of my best friends, Caleb Allen, to the building, and Caleb's here to show us a little bit about what it takes to navigate as a leader in an online world. And I, one thing I love about Caleb is his knowledge on personality types, his knowledge on leadership and self-development is just beyond the roof or through the roof, I should say, not beyond the roof, through the roof. And I wanted to bring him on to talk about how we can navigate as leaders in an online world and really hit on the certain personality types. Because as you know, when you're growing a business, it's good to know what are the personality types within your organization and how you can respond and talk to each one of those personality types. So Caleb, my friend, how's it going? Welcome to the show. And uh, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Michael? Doing awesome, man. So pumped to have you on here. Um, our audience, I feel like would really benefit from what we're talking about today. So that's why I brought you on, man. So um, in a nutshell, I know who you are. And Caleb actually works within one of our organizations. He's been my best friend um, for a long time. And he actually is one of the guys that got me into like the leadership and self-development space. I always share that story with people when I talk to them. But Caleb, give everybody watching right now a little rundown about who you are and why you love learning about personality types and leadership and why you love teaching that as well. Yeah, absolutely. So I've known Michael as far as far back as I can remember. Uh, we've we've uh, grown up together and um, some really cool stories uh, from growing up in uh in and around uh, just some different organizations Michael's family had started and going to school together and all those things uh, that we can talk about later. But I remember being a 17-year-old uh, and I was introduced to John Maxwell through a big event that I was at and heard him speak for the first time and absolutely changed my life. And kind of through that, I uh, started reading several of his books and other uh, leadership books that I'd already um, really started reading at that point and sharing them with other people. And um, a few years later, started the John Maxwell certification program, uh, went through several things there, and had already heard of DISC kind of through just uh, different jobs and, and organizations I had been a part of, but had never really learned on the side of teaching it or training or any of those things. And, and uh, John Maxwell had a setup where they you could get certified to train and teach other people on it. So that was something we did a few years back and I absolutely have been changed by the program, just kind of learning different personalities, how I am so I can connect with other people. And then, you know, being able to teach that to others has uh, been pretty powerful as well. So um, that's kind of that part in a nutshell. Uh, my wife and I um, have, are both in the space of speaking and coaching and training in that space, and then soon to be authors uh, over the next couple months. Congratulations, uh, by the way. Well. Thank you. Love it, man. Yeah, so Caleb, I wanted to bring you on, bro, and I wanna talk about the importance of connection, right? And that's gonna be the big theme around today's video, if you're watching this. You said it just a second ago about connecting, you, you were learning how to connect. And I feel like in a digital world, like after COVID hit, right? The big C word. Once COVID hit, people realized that they could take their organizations virtual. And I would love to learn the stats. I don't know the stats, but I do know that a big, big percentage of companies never went back to having in-person meetings, in-person organizations. They all stayed virtual. And so for some companies, what this has caused, this has caused a, a bit of a disruption within their company, right? For others, they adapted well and they've been thriving. 
And so today I want to talk about how we can really connect with our employees, our clients, and go into maybe even just for a little bit, the certain personality types and how we can really be aware of what those are so that we can build better connections. Because we know, Caleb, you are different than me. The viewer, you watching this right now, you're different than me. You're different than Caleb. And so how do we interact in a way that is conducive for growth, but then also in a way to where we can understand them as a leader? And so that's what I want to jump into today. So are you cool if we just go like right to the meat and potatoes? Yeah, let's do it. All right, man. So one of the questions I had was about the personality types, and I wanted to jump into this. And just to lead this off with... I guess the very beginning start with this as the foundation. I just said a second ago that you aren't like me. I'm not like you and our viewers aren't like either of us. So I'm going to talk about identifying and cultivating relationships with different personality types. Right. And so let's go into, can you break down exactly what the different personality types, we don't have to spend too long on it, but what the different personality types are. And then we can go from there, jumping into how we can connect with each of those better. Is that cool? Could you give us a breakdown? Yeah, for sure. It's um, one of those things. Uh, one of the reasons why I absolutely love DISC and kind of this setup. So, you know, I've gone through several things like Enneagram and Myers Briggs and several of the other personality types that are out there because this uh, topic and discussion and setup really is just. Um, something that I'm very passionate about. And I love kind of learning different ways of connecting with people, uh, especially that are different than me. There was a period of time where I was like, okay, if that person's different than me, uh, then there's something wrong with them because everyone should just be like me. And if anybody has ever had kind of that viewpoint, um, it's not a good one to have really, you know, kind of starting out or being arrogant kind of in that way. But that was kind of my mentality is I could get along with everyone, but I would always kind of look and be like, okay, well, that person is kind of opposite of me. Um, and I didn't really know how to connect or any of those things. And so that's where DIST really came in and it was powerful is because it's simple enough that I can talk about it for five, 10 minutes and people can kind of get the concept and learn something to, to apply. Or uh, it has so much depth and different patterns and things you can study for that person or personality type that's like, okay, I want all the details. I want to study this thoroughly. I like want to spend a hundred hours on this. There's enough in disc. They can do that. Or there's enough, like somebody in five, 10 minutes can go ahead and get kind of a concept to uh, start applying to their lives. So whenever we look at disc and we kind of see the setup, there's the four letters in disc D I S and C and that breakdown uh, is very simple. Like you think uh, D direct, uh, a kind of a dominant personality, just someone that's very to the point. This would this would be an example with like a uh, Gordon Ramsay or a Judge Judy or someone that's just very uh, straightforward and kind of in the online or uh, business space. Someone would think of maybe a Grant Cardone, uh, somebody okay. that is just like I'm gonna I'm gonna say it like it is. If you don't like my opinion, that's fine. This is this is what I'm thinking, and so they're very to the point. They're not going to give you a lot of fluff. They're not going to, you know, kind of uh, tiptoe around what they're thinking. They will typically just get directly to the point. These are your kind of heavy is that, hitters. Is that a bad thing or no? Because I, I hear a lot of people. Well, one, I want to go back. You said at, at the yeah. beginning, you always you would talk about how you focused on and maybe you felt yourself more attracted to people like you. And I think that's what like a lot of bosses, a lot of online entrepreneurs, they try to hire only people who are like them into their organization. We can have that conversation later, but is that a bad thing? So you're talking about the, the disc personality types, right? And we break that down. D is for, you said direct and dominance, dominant. Yeah. So is, is that like, a, is there any bad personality types or is like being that direct dominant, can that be a good thing? So, every personality and every person is kind of wired and created kind of in their own way. So um, I don't think there's necessarily a good or bad personality, maybe depending on on which personality you ask or a uh, person. But as you get to study out personalities and how people are actually wired uh, and, and just who they are, it, you begin to realize, okay, we're all kind of created differently and we all have different setups and uh, personalities and things that that really do come together to where we can either work together really well uh, because each personality has its strengths and every personality has its weakness. So whenever you're talking about hiring within an organization, we want to you know make sure that we, we are 
getting those personalities that complement us. Because if we only have one specific personality in an organization, the organization isn't going to last very long because you have typically one strength with a lot of the same weaknesses. So you want to begin to hire in some of those uh, personalities that can pick up and carry on where your weakness uh, may come into play. So uh, don't hire everyone like you, because if not, you're gonna there's gonna be gaps missing. So really, it is smart for a business owner, an entrepreneur looking to grow their their company organization to learn uh, some of these different personalities, so that they know where are the gaps within the company that they can utilize uh, to really strengthen the organization moving forward. I love that, and so all amazing content. So let's go to the the D and disc, the direct dominant people. What would you say is like some of the strengths that they have and maybe some of the weaknesses that you see a lot of times somebody that's has that D personality type? So they're really good at making decisions. I, I say D personalities will make a decision even if it's wrong. They don't mind, you know, when they're <laughs> under pressure, they work best. So like when you think of someone that, you know, um, really needs to make decisions quick. If it's like a military general or someone, it's like, hey, this is happening now. We need a quick decision. They're able to work amazing under pressure where some people it's like, okay, if I have this stress, I shut down, I can't really think. I need to have no stress to be able to make a decision. Uh, D personalities are great. Like if it doesn't matter what's going on, like the amount of pressure, they're like, hey, I actually work better under pressure. So I'll make the decision. They can quickly analyze all the facts someone else may give them based on the situation. And they can say, okay, if this is the facts, um, let's do this. And they can they can be direct. They can get decisions done, say what, what needs to happen to really make it happen. They're very fast paced and they are on the side of tasks, like getting things done. They don't care if they steamroll over people on a weakness side of things because they're just about progress. Like we need to get uh, these things done, um, you know, whatever it takes. And, and that really is just part of it. So uh, they're not naturally on the relationship side and and uh, they're they're not really slow paced on the other side of the chart. So they uh, they tend to kind of have that section in place of it's, uh, you know, it's basically it's me and I'm getting things done. Even if I'm a one man army, I'm going to make it happen. Uh, it just really is is part of that personality. Gotcha. So it, it can be one way or the other. They only make up 3% of the world, uh, which is is good. I don't know if the world could handle um, any, <laughs> any more. But so you're that's, saying that uh, I, I think I sway more towards the D side of, you know, this D side of disc. Um, so you're saying you don't want more Michaels in the world. Come on, man. I mean, what's up with that? No, I'm just, I mean, it, you're absolutely amazing. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if, if the world could handle it anymore. I think God knew, OK, 3% uh, right. it, enough for. Uh, for them to kind of battle between uh, themselves and and kind of lead, but but they tend to be natural leaders in in kind of a way of like uh, very outspoken and kind of this is. But uh, the, the, the thing I want to say, Caleb, is that just because somebody is a D personality type, and maybe you guys are watching this, know that the D personality types aren't the only leaders in the world. You can have a different personality type and still be a leader. And so, Caleb, wouldn't you say that's true that just because like people look at, oh, because they're direct, because they have more a dominant personality, they should be the leader. It's, so give us a little perspective to that. Should should it be that way? Are, are other personality types? I, I believe so, but I just want to hear it from you. Um, are other personality types great leaders as well? I mean, we can I guess it's some kind of segment sure, to yeah. the other personality types, but. I just know that a lot of people look at maybe that D as like, hey, those are the only leaders. Is that true? Not at all. So um, any person uh, can be a leader. Uh, John Maxwell breaks, breaks it down as leadership is influence. And any any person has you know the capability of different people that they'll be able to influence because there are people that will not um, take as much from a D personality because they're so direct, they're so straightforward, they can come across as arrogant. Um, some of those things. And there's other personalities that are like, that person's way too arrogant. I'm not, you know, following them or taking their their leadership uh, seriously, any of those things. And so they will um, be influenced by different personalities based on that or, you know, kind of depending on how that personality can be. But your D personality is what I'm saying is 
they tend to be more of a vocal leader, like straightforward, cast the vision. This is what we're going to do. We're going to make it happen. Um, don't, and sometimes they don't know how it's going to happen, but they're like, it's going to happen. And so they'll kind of be kind of that driver personality of this is what we're going to do and, um, and work to make those things happen. Love it. And so as we're going through this, if you're watching or listening to this, I want you to identify which one you relate with the most, which one you feel like you are the most. And there's actually Caleb at the end. I'm sure we'll talk about how you guys can go about getting it, getting an assessment for yourself to figure out exactly what your leadership or your personality type is, maybe even what your employees personality personality types are. But um, so let's go. D is the first one, right? So let's go into the second one and break this down because I want people to actually be able to go through this and identify for themselves which one they they think they are. Yeah, so second is I. Uh, th this is what you would think of as a very high energy people person, life of the party. Um, I picture like a younger Will Smith, uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, kind of just like the world is his, you know, is his friend list because he's going to be um, typically friends with anyone that he's around, whatever's going on. Uh, just very high energy. Uh, very people oriented, may not get tasks done as quick as the D personality uh, because they're they're busy talking to other people um, in the organization. Uh, they can be um, just just very much about relationships, about wanting to have fun. Uh, they can make anything into a party. Uh, they, they can really have fun no matter where they are. If nobody else is going to have fun, they're going to make sure they find a way to have fun um, no matter what's going on. So so it's like uh, even like a Robin Williams was, was a high eye personality. Um, whenever you think through just like they're very inspiring, they can kind of lead people uh, by, you know, just bringing in inspiration with their personality. Um, and they want a relationship, like I said, with everybody. So it's not so much they have a few friends that they're close with. They can tend to have very almost shallow friendships, not as deep with a lot of people is, is typically naturally. And the so way you would say maybe that's a weakness of, of the I personality type. It can be kind of almost uh, jumping from, from relationship to relationship to, to be friends with everyone instead of, you know, having uh, so many people, a few people maybe that they're closer with, which can still be part of that. But, but yeah, that can definitely be um, kind of one of the negative traits as well. Gotcha. So D dominant, more direct, I, they're like the life of the party, the people that love spending time around the water cooler at work or maybe in the Zoom meetings yeah. at, um, you know, on your, vir you know, your virtual company, uh, your online organization. And so let's go to the next one and let's let's see how much of these change. Right. Because we're making a, a slow progression away from the dominant. Right. And let's talk about the maybe the other side of the spectrum and go into the next one. Yeah. So eyes are going to be kind of your faster pace people, people, and, uh, and details are not always their thing. So they need people in their life that are going to, um, kind of like the D's keep them on track. And then, um, like the C's we'll get to in a minute, they love details, but it's, it is, uh, they are, they may not keep up with all the details and know every, uh, fact that they may need to know. So that kind of comes into the, the weakness as well of like, they may not always know specific details of what's going on with our S's though they you can kind of think of your stable steady uh individuals they make up the majority of the world kind of your 69 percent of the world's population uh are just very in line with uh, what they have going on they they are very loyal um almost to a fault and then i say typically with your your s personalities it's as if they have a very very long fuse like they don't get angry quick but when they do get angry, it's typically like nuclear. Like they have, you know, very long fuse, very big bomb. It's kind of like, hey, um, we are going to endure as much as we can of negative personality things and and so forth. We'll put up with a lot, but when we finally uh, get mad, it is it is typically pretty explosive. And so um, you may know someone in your life that's kind of that way. Um, they they can be, you know, just kind of the people that want to take care of other people. Um, they want to help other people out. They're very loyal. They're very kind, um, uh, you know, kind of within the, within that scope. So they don't get angry easy. Uh, it takes, it takes a lot of things to provoke them to get angry, but they, uh, when they do, they, they tend to be. Right. You know, and are of, these people like more outspoken or would you say, do you think most of the time, maybe they can have both? I don't know. You're, you're, 
more of an expert on this than I am, but like, what do you see like from a communication perspective from these people? Because I want our audiences to not just think about yourself when we're going through these, but think about people within your organization, because what we're about to transition to in here in just a minute is how you can connect with these people, right? And so from a communication standpoint, how do the S's communicate? So they typically will have, um, they'll be on the slower pace side of the, the disc spectrum, and then they are also on that people side. So they are ones, they are per, a personality that doesn't love conflict. You know, our D personalities are fine with the conflict. Like we said, sometimes a D personality on the negative side may create conflict uh, just because they work better under stress. Whereas your S personality doesn't work as well under stress. And they are the personality that wants everybody to get along. So it's it's one of those things of like, hey, I just want everybody to get along. Let's uh, let's move forward. Um, you know, kind of in that loyal, caring, wanting everybody to be friends uh, personality. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna bring brownies to the meeting. They're gonna you know find ways to to just make it a happy environment for everyone because that's kind of what they're looking for. But they're gonna communicate on a on a slower pace with less detail um, in, in what they do. And, and they're gonna be on that people side. So they're gonna be on the side of wanting relationships that are uh, fewer. They don't wanna be friends with the entire world that would overwhelm them, but they're gonna have a few core friends that they wanna have a lifetime long relationship with. And uh, that really is gonna you know, kind of set those things up. So you think kind of like a Mother Teresa wanting to help people, um, some of those things, she would uh, be an example of an S personality. Love it. I'm, I'm loving this conversation, man. This is cool. Just to, as I'm thinking this through now, I'm like, okay, I'm going to, this person is that I'm this and I'm just going through. So this is cool. So the last yeah. personality type is C, right? And so what is this, what's the C stand for? And give us like the strengths and weaknesses that C personality types have. Yeah. So your, your C personality, um, whenever you have the chart uh, broken down or if you, you have the slide, it's kind of like uh, the C personality is on that um, slower pace definitely than the D personality. And they are on the, uh, they are on the task oriented side of the chart. So these are your people that um, can love a lot of details. Uh, they can kind of be in place of like, Hey, I'm going to keep up with all the numbers. I'm going to have all the details. Um, I'm going to, you know, know exactly what's going on. You think like a, a Steve jobs or a Bill Gates, or just kind of those people that um, can kind of be technologically driven as well with coding and, and some of those things, but they, uh, they make up 17% of the world's population. Um, they can be more reserved, task-oriented. It's like they prefer to work alone a lot of the time, and then they are going to be kind of more detailed in certain ways. So if they're maybe wired of like, hey, I would prefer to kind of work alone, just go get done what needs to get done. Um, here's the details. You know, I'm going to work through. I'm going to get everything together. I'm going to have the numbers ready. Uh, so when the when the D personality or somebody needs the details, they're going to have those ready. Um, but, and they're going to be maybe more on, on that slower pace than what you would think of with an I or a D personality. So you think that maybe the C's there, are they like super analytical, right? Or is that more of like a C, like which, what, which personality type would be like super analytical looks into things. Like if you, let's say we have an online organization, like they're the ones that are breaking down everything. Is that the C personality? Yeah, they are going to do the research. They're going to be the ones uh, getting everything together. Uh, maybe the ones that are more naturally driven to uh, put together numbers, uh, keep up with with uh, you know your charts, your workflow, your Excel sheets, some of those things. Um, not to say none of the other personalities can do that. It's just maybe they're more naturally, um, they naturally enjoy some of those things with with what you do within your company. So they can put together this big presentation, get all the numbers. And then when the D personality is like, hey, just kind of give me the bullet points. I don't want to <laughs> read all of it. That's me. Um, That's me. Tell me what's going on. So that that kind of comes into play where you're like, I don't have to see every every detail, know every fact. Um, just kind of get to the point. Tell me what's going on so I can make the decision uh, with with whatever needs to be done. If the D is kind of needing to make that decision um, within the organization based on what's going on. And I love that because we need all personality types. So if you're sitting here and you're like, man, I, I think I'm this personality type in my organization, you're identifying where each of maybe your employees are at or maybe your clients um, know that it takes when you're building a team, it takes all personality types to win. Right. 
like we mentioned at the very beginning. So don't don't feel like um, Caleb said in the beginning that you need to have a bunch of D personalities or a bunch of C personalities, whatever you need to have that um, that that variety of um, personalities to really win. And that's why I love like just looking at man, God created us awesome, right? Like just the the fact that there are different personality types for me blows me away. And it just makes me like thankful and also just amazes me because it take like it takes a whole army of people to grow something and build something. So let's talk a little bit, Kayla, about because um, that's really cool. And I think people are going to find value in that. So let's talk about how we can be more, I guess, aware in our organizations um, whenever it comes to personality types, how we can maybe make decisions and make key um, leadership pivots based upon personality types. Because I feel like a lot of people underrate what we're talking about right now. And it would be because they are ignorant and, and like ignorant, I think feels like people give it a bad like vibe to it. But like ignorant just means like not being aware of something. And so I feel like a lot of leaders, they're just ignorant to the fact that like knowing and having this skill that you're talking about, about personality types can really take your business and your leadership to the next level. Because just imagine your viewer watching me, just imagine if you knew all the personality types within your organization, you knew what um, Billy personality type was, you knew what Vanessa's was, you knew what Caleb was, right? And you could go within an organization and have conversations based on their personality type, right? And I'm not saying have conversations about their personality types, but I'm talking about having a conversation and you can enter the conversation with maybe a different tone of voice, depending on who it is, right? Maybe having a different posture when you're talking to a client because you know their personality type. And so, Kayla, let's talk a little bit about that for a second. Let's talk a little bit about how can people listening to this right now or watching this right now get good at identifying personality types inside their organizations beside having besides having a, an assessment done for each of them what would what tips would you give to an online entrepreneur here who's working with clients and has a team and they want to get better at this what would like how would they go about identifying these personality types and becoming more aware of them in a faster and more, I guess, simple manner instead of going out and doing a bunch of assessments. Where would you start? I would say it kind of starts with taking a little bit of effort in actually listening to people or just kind of observing even body language, some of those things on uh, personalities. I think when, when somebody's talking, um, listen to the manner they naturally are kind of talking in or what they're doing. And, um, and then really you can kind of follow suit and, and it's typically what I do, you know, if, if there's a certain way, if I'm talking to a D personality, you can normally tell cause they're very to the point. They're going to tell you their name, what they do. They're not wanting to necessarily always talk about, uh, the weather and all these extra fluff conversations. They're just like, okay, who are you? What do you do? What's going on? And, uh, and when I talk to that person, I'm going to want to get to the point. Because I can tell they want me to get to the point. So I'm going to answer their questions, be more fast paced. I may be more direct um, in my conversation. Uh, if I'm thinking through, you know, talking with like an I personality where they're going to want to have fun. Uh, they're kind of just in place of wanting to, to build relationships and some of those things. Um, you can always kind of go in, in place of still kind of that faster pace, but maybe be a little more relaxed. If you're a C personality, it's more analytical. Um, or if you're kind of that D personality, it's to the point, um, actually ask them about themselves or, you know, about people or relationships, because that's important to them. Um, you're thinking like, you know, getting in with, uh, an S personality, um, they're going to be someone that, uh, once again, you show, you care about them. So everybody, no matter what part of the chart they're on, really the answer is their favorite topic is themselves. So you can always ask people about themselves. And kind of based on how they answer those questions of, you know, um, whatever you're talking about, you're able to kind of come in and, and follow suit with with how you answer and, and meet them where they are. I think that's one of the best things as a leader, no matter your personality, is getting to a place you meet people where they are. So if they are on one of these sections of the chart, just so you kind of know how to talk to them and, and react with them. Um, my S personality, they want to know. Um, 
because they are a very loyal person that they kind of matter. Their loyalty will matter. Uh, even knowing, liking, and being able to trust you because the, the S personality will go to battle with you. They will have your back. They're going to be super, super loyal. And they typically match up with a D personality because D personalities uh, desire loyalty. Their biggest fear is, is betrayal or someone um, stabbing them in the back. So well, that's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to mention. I'll just butt in for a second. I was going to mention how each personality type has different fears, right? And so you being able to, and I love what you were talking about listening. You were saying, just start out with listening. And I think as leaders of organizations, we think well, we have to talk a lot, but I think it's the opposite, right? We should do more listening than talking. I'm the first to tell you I need to work on this, okay? So I'm not here saying I'm amazing at this, but I love what you said because I just put a bunch of thoughts in my head. I'm like, yes, as leaders and online entrepreneurs, we should get really good at listening because based upon your listening, you can form what you want to say based off of that. And I think what happens is most people lead with the conversations and we never take time. We can't, we can't take time to figure out what personality type and what they prefer and what they don't prefer. And so I just love that, man, because listening allows you to dive into those fears that people may have and then ultimately provide a cure for those fears. And so I just, you were talking about how the D's personality types, like they fear people are going to break their trust. Right. And yeah. I, I just was thinking there's so many different fears that they all have and listening, I feel like is a, is a good cure for that. And so I'll let you continue on. I'm sorry. I just was like, that was powerful. I just want to make sure that the viewers and listeners got that. Even though listening is so simple, a lot of things we talk about on this podcast are so simple, but they're, they're a little harder to implement than you would imagine. So I'll let you continue on. I'm sorry about that. You're good. So really there's so much with disc as I was opening up with just basically <laughs> saying that you could, we could spend and people have spent, um, thousands of hours kind of going through uh, so much between, you know, personality types and everything that goes on and really thinking with C just kind of giving a brief synopsis to close it out. They are more into the detailed space and then task uh, side of the chart. So, I mean, whenever you're, you're communicating with them, you want to just make sure they've put a lot of work into the details and getting some of those things. So value uh, the work they've put in, listen to, to some of the things they want to go through and talk to or, or go through um, kind of on that side because they've probably put a lot of work into their presentation or Excel sheet or whatever it is. Um, so just make sure you, uh, in, in that way, sh show them that they're valued and, and so forth with that same setup. And uh, I think that's, that's part of you know, just that portion of it, depending on where your personality is at. But um, in, in a brief synopsis or, or setup, as we said today for DISC, that's uh, kind of what you can look forward to or um, what you can know is going on. Yeah, I love that, man. Thanks for thanks for pouring out. And I, what I would challenge each of you to do right now, if you're watching or listening to this, is take some time today. And I want you to take inventory of yourself Break down your leadership, your personality type. But then also what I want you to do is take some time and I want you to analyze and really focus on your clients, your employees, and try to figure out. You may not know right off the bat, but I want you to think about past conversations, past maybe disputes you've had. But I want you to look at those and I want you to identify what those personality types are that you're interacting with on a daily basis. I would love, I mean, Kayla, I think this would be a good challenge for them is to sit down and just, you could take a little piece of note paper here, dropping stuff, take a note paper and just write down their name and kind of what you think their personality types are. And then go from there and study how you can connect with these personality types better, connect with these employees better, because I promise you when you slow down and you do this, it's going to, it's going to require you to focus on your leadership skills a little bit. It's going to force you to get away from yourself for a minute, take your eyes off yourself for a minute and look at other people and focus on asking yourself, who are they really? And how can I help them grow? Right? How can I help them? Con uh, how can I build our connection stronger? Because one thing as leaders, I never want to happen. I never want um, Caleb, this happened for you. I never wanted to happen for me or anybody is I never want you to get so focused on yourself that you forget to build a connection with those that really matter. I never want you to build so much of a, uh, narrowed perspective, I would say on yourself and what you want to do that you would forget about those that are within our care, right? That we forget about those that are within 
the realms of our organization. And because ultimately, if that does happen, you're going to get people, employees, clients that feel um, deserted, that they feel like um, you don't you don't care about their opinions. And we don't want that to happen. Right. And that was the point of this conversation today, Caleb. And I appreciate you coming on. It's, it's been fun. I wish we could sit here for like an hour or two and talk about this. But that was the point of this conversation is that help you learn about their personality types so that you can get better with connection and leadership. And so if you're here today and you want to learn more about this, Caleb, how can they connect with you and how can they go about becoming better at identifying and connecting with the people under their care? Yeah. So if, if, uh, anyone wants to find me on, you know, social media, they can, uh, search, uh, for me and, and go ahead and connect that way. Uh, we got a new website we're working on getting launched, um, where people can go and get the assessment if they want to take it, learn more about themselves so they can know how to connect with others better. Um, and feel free to reach out or message me there and we'll, uh, we'll get you set up and, uh, rock and rolling with that. Love it. Well, thanks, man, for coming on. If you if you guys are watching this, just so you know, this is one episode of many that we've done and we are doing. Uh, we do this every single Monday. OK, every single Monday we're dropping these and we're calling them the Million Dollar Secrets Show. So we're bringing in people who have built successful businesses, people that work with me um, inside of my organization to share some of the secrets we've learned when it comes to helping other people build six and seven figure businesses online. And uh, the gems that are being dropped are amazing. So I would definitely recommend you go back and listen to past episodes. Or if you want to learn about future episodes, go ahead and click the button below to subscribe. Whether you're listening or you're watching, hit the subscribe button because you'll get a notification every Monday when these things are released for you to consume. And listen, do me a favor. If you enjoyed something from today, if you got a gem from Caleb or you got a big takeaway, I want you to put in the comments if you're watching on YouTube right now, put in the comments your biggest takeaway. This allows me to know that, you know, the person we brought on was a good pick, but it also lets the person that was speaking and that was the special guest, lets them know, uh, you know, how much you like their, their episode. So guys, again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you next week right here on the Mil Million Dollar Secrets show. And uh, like I always say, God bless you guys. Let's keep crushing it and let's make the most of this week. We'll see you guys very, very soon. God bless. Big time.